Hi, my name is Jonathan Trisnati. I'm an incoming sophomore here at UCSD, majoring in physics with specialization in material science. And this past summer, I worked under Professor Shyan Mukherjee in the electrical and computer engineering on my project, which is titled AFM Tip Modification of Micro Rings. So I'll begin with some background information. Uh, the most basic device that I'm working with is a micro ring resonator which is a photonic device, which is shaped in a circle or a racetrack. And its function is to filter out light of certain wavelengths, wavelengths that meet its resonance condition. And um, if you chain many of these micro rings together, you form what is called a coupled resonator optical waveguide, or a crow. And here are some pictures of a micro ring and a crow. This is a racetrack shaped micro ring. And here is a 35 ring crow, and this image is taken with an IR camera. And um, crows have, are very exciting, and they're a new waveguide, and um, they have many potential applications in light modulation and other uh, areas. So the motivation for my project comes from uh, the potential of photonic devices at the interconnect layer, that is, um, board-to-board -board and chip-to-chip -chip interfaces, uh, we'll be seeing more photonic devices in the future. And um, the microring resonator plays a building block for more complex devices, and hopefully we can overcome bandwidth limitations of copper with these photonic devices. The problem, though, is that there arise many uh, uncontrollable defects due to nanoscale disorder during the fabrication of these devices. Uh, so, you know, so if we fabricate some rings, some might be shorter, some might be longer in length. And this, this causes a lot of problems for you know, very complex devices, such as crows. So just one ring that's off can lead to the entire crow not working correctly. Uh, there's hope, however, as the micro nano photonics group here at UCSD has developed a way to tune micro rings using an AFM tip. And um, so my project was to look more into this to see if it's possible to quantify and locate error in the crow as well as uh, potentially correct these errors using the AFM tip. Um, so I started out with using simulations in MATLAB. And my first project was this probed crow simulation. Uh, this is a diagram showing the basic layout. Uh, this is a crow with the input and output waveguides at the end. And this is a probe, which is just another waveguide. And the idea was that by touching the probe on each ring from left to right, we could say, oh, this ring has so-and-so error, this ring has no error, this ring has a little bit of error, um, and hopefully we could know the error and potentially correct them using the AFM tip. Um, and my simulation yielded, uh, this is, a, potent, this is a, uh, a typical result of the simulation. Um, so this is a five ring crow, and the probe is touching, here the probe is touching ring one, ring two, ring three, ring four, ring five, and we see the output of the probe, which is measured in decibels, and the x-axis is wavelength of the light in nanometers. And we're looking at light, which is around 1,500, 1,600 nanometers. So the probe uh, output shows some interesting characteristics. Uh, we see that the gaps get deeper and deeper as we go along the crow, which is reasonable to expect. And um, we also uh, see some symmetric properties about the middle of the crow. So uh, ring one and ring five in a five ring crow might look the same. Ring two and ring four might look the same. And um, so yeah, we see some symmetric properties. And uh, however, at the end of the day, we couldn't quite get a solid uh, uh, feedback on whether or not a ring had error. We couldn't tell if, if the probe was on two, we couldn't tell if ring two had error or not. So that was uh, unfortunate, but I moved on to my next project which was a uh, tuned crow simulation. So in the past, we only used the AFM tip to correct single rings. But I wanted to see what would happen if we tuned a crow. If we tuned one ring in a crow or two rings in a crow, what would happen? Um, so my results yielded some interesting uh, uh, results. And uh, most interesting was perhaps that the segmentation properties uh, of tuning. We could take a big crow and tune it and it would look like a little crow. We could segment it into smaller pieces. Um, and also by tuning it, we could see how it would change over more tuning. Uh, this is a diagram of the tuning setup. Uh, this is a chip with 
a device on it. Here you see a single ring. Uh, this gray uh, machine is the, the AFM tip, and there's a voltage applied to it, and we scan it across the ring. It just literally moves left and right along the ring. And this oxidizes the ring, which, change, which effectively changes its refractive index. And this changes the resonance wavelengths. So this is the process of tuning the crow. And um, we saw that in a three ring crow, we would tune it, and it would change from three peaks in, in its output to one peak. And indeed, uh, when we did this in the experimental in experiment, we saw these results. The three initial peaks it had in the output uh, changed to one peak after tuning. So that's great news. The simulation got the prediction right. Um, but if you look at it, it's, this one's a bit more noisy and uh, a bit messier looking than the simulation. Um, but this, is, this leaves room for future work. Uh, the simulation was really simple. Uh, it took out a lot of factors that could really get this thing messy looking. Um, but there's, there's hope because the simulation got this one right. And perhaps in the future, we will we'll be able to uh, tune crows perfectly and, and uh, get very high performance crows that are very complex and long. And that'll be a very exciting time in the field. And I'd like to close by saying uh, how great of an experience Cal IT2 was. I really enjoyed it. And perhaps the best thing was having the opportunity to meet all these other scholars that had so much passion in their, in their work, uh, whether it was in fields like bioengineering or chemistry or humanities, they all seemed really passionate and eager to get work done. And it was interesting to see all their results and kind of get an idea of the direction that some of their fields were going. And it was a really great chance to meet uh, new friends and uh, see other undergrads. And uh, I'll close by some, with some acknowledgments. I'd like to thank my professor, Shyan Mukherjee, uh, who accepted me into his lab, as, uh, as well as the rest of the Micro Nano Photonics group, uh, especially Yuan Shen, who helped me a lot uh, in the lab and really guided me. Um, and I'd also like to thank Cal IT2 for making this all possible. I had a really great summer. Thank you.